ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here at the shop once again. Now, in the bouquet of bullshit video that we just did, you saw a glimpse of these hubs sitting here on the mill. These are 1968 Pontiac Bonneville hubs, and that's what this project's going to be about. Now, those four-wheel drive hubs that we, we worked on, they, they were an antique, and that's why he wanted to maintain and, and use those hubs. So they're going to be just restoring that vehicle, and it's probably going to be show for most of its, the rest of its life there. But that was what that project was, <clears throat> and that's why he wanted to pursue the route we took. And I appreciate all the comments, and that's why I, <laughs> that's why I keep going, and uh, you're, you're driving me to make everybody think and comment and share. That's what this is all about. All right. What are we going to do to these? Well, the bearing bores in the small end, the outer race bearing bore is open up. That one's actually, when it the bearing's all the way down in there, it spins. And I mic'd up this one here, and it's egg-shaped. And it will soon be in that same position or predicament of spinning as well these are kind of a unique hub they're all aluminum with the exception of the studs and the drum so they're a multi-alloy drum here and they the basic locating points on the bore here is holding the two races and a seal lip and then that's kind of all relief on the inside. It does have two notches, 180 from each other across the hub. And part of part of the reason why that's worn out, and this one here is egg-shaped, is the maintenance on these hubs over the years. You look here's a shot of looking down on the bore, and you can see all kinds of misses with the punches, and what well, we we call them pecker tracks. And uh, over the years of taking a punch and reaching in one relief and punching the bearing one way as far as you can and then punching it the other way and eventually it pops out. Good job, right? Well, as you're moving this hardened steel race back and forth in that aluminum housing, you're massaging that material and slowly spreading it and pushing it out into a, a different configuration and, and now you're in line with those two punch areas you have grown the bore and across from there seems to be less than or shrinking the bore because when you push out the material one way it's got to come in the other way it's just like if you hit it with a hammer right here it's going to push it down here but it's going to push out that way kind of just my analysis of why these are with the way they are and i'm having to work on them okay now because you're you're watching this i'm sharing this and you're probably gonna hit me with a sponsorship or you're gonna buy a t-shirt at the end of this video i'm gonna give this customer a pretty good break on this project here just so that answers everybody's questions <laughs> because i can all right and that uh that video is still bringing up quite a few views as well. All right, well, we'll just keep uh, we'll keep going the way we are. All right, I have to pull out that three jaw, put this four jaw in there, and we got a couple other pieces of tooling, and I'm going to show you how to set this up in the four jaw with a little outside the four jaw thinking. All right, let's get going. Okay, first off, let's take our little spanner here and. We're going to go ahead and break the nut loose here. <clears throat> okay. Now that we got it broke loose, now we can put it in neutral. And uh, I know that my number two jaw is in line with the key. Now, I don't have a lifting eye. And those of you that haven't watched all my earlier videos and when it came about and when I first got the plasma cutter I went ahead and took a slug 
and cut out an eye with a lifting ring here so that I can just insert it into the chuck here, line it up with my number two jaw like that. And I know that when this is flush here, I'm pretty well centered or balanced. Um, you can set it up however, whichever way works for you. All right, now we'll bring over our hook here. Grab a little tension there and we'll unscrew it. And there you go. And you can see how well balanced it is. I mean, you can move it by your hand if you need to when you go to put it back on. All right. Now we'll go ahead and we'll do a quick blowout on it and we'll clean up the spindle uh, and get ready to put the forge up there. We have a lifting eye for that. Okay, I'm getting ready to put this on here, but I'm going to give you just a little subject uh, that could be an argument. Uh, maybe not. Uh, it has been in the past. And when I first assembled my chuck onto a tapered nose spindle like this the question is you assemble it with the keyway up or you assemble it with the keyway down the old timer that first brought me into the shop and started having me put these things together we assemble it with the keyway up the reason why you're doing that is because the keyway in the bore here and the keyway on the top here are flat okay they slide perfectly even and the threads and the the chuck sitting onto that can be brought in and your threads are in line to assemble the threads the other part of the conversation is always hey do what about if this was the other way then chips could fall down in there and they wouldn't get stuck between the taper okay whereas if it was assembled like this the chips could go down in there my mentor said you assemble it clean and there is no chips to fall down all right food for thought there you go all right let's uh let's go ahead and get this on in here i've already blown it out and it is clean and there is no chips to fall down in there all right and <laughs> it's that simple <laughs> Um, so once in a while, I put a light squirt of ZEP45 in there before I, I used ZEP45. I did use WD40. WD40 used to be something this day, uh, even though they have a patented uh, ingredient. I don't, think they, I don't think they're doing the same as they used to do. So anyway, ZEP45, I like their ac action. All right. Move my two files I have, I keep back there. So I got more room. <clears throat> and I give this just a couple jumps here. <clears throat> and that's tight enough. There we go. Okay, we've got the four jaw in there. And I open up the jaw so I know that I had room for this piece to fit in here. <clears throat> Where I'm going to want this slug, and this is going to be the support for the rear or inside bearing race okay and i brought i i i've kind of just grabbed the race and i went around the shop and i found a piece of aquamet 17 i'm very comfortable turning it it also turns real nice gives me a nice finish and i'm going to be able to give a dummy bearing uh surface turned on the end of this okay where this is going to go yet is is not known <clears throat> to me yet so we're just going to Come around here and we're gonna halfway get this thing in the center here and we'll just give it a a rough uh, dialing in here Okay, all right. All 
All right, because we're gonna be sliding in and out, but at least we know our chuck jaws are moving in and out. And we're that close. If you loosen two and you move it and tighten two, the same two, you're gonna be within that amount as well. All right, only because I know that these chuck jaws are still pretty well parallel with each other and they're not bell mount. All right, so here's the aha. <laughs> That's what he's doing. This is going to guide the bearing bore. We don't know where that's going to be at yet because we're going to go take measurements here in a, in a uh, short bit. What are we taking measurements and what are we going to be judging that stick out? Well, we're going to be judging that from a set of soft parallels. We're actually going to create a set of parallels that we can machine in here to support that outer brake band which is a finished machine surface that matches the bearings or at least we're going to prove that it matches the bearing alignment because once we put our hub up here and it's supported here and here we'll be able to indicate our bore and prove that we are true with it all right so we've got a machine knees and we're going to we're going to put a t-nut in here we'll put four of them in here and so we're going to have one Allen bolt going down into here, which will be down in here close. Leave all this material here to be able to machine. And we're going to take the center of our th four Allens right here, which is just a little bit under a half an inch because it's a metric size. And we will put a pin that will locate that. So that's going to that's going to help hold that this way. This this bolt here will hold the parallel in place. And we're going to do that for the four of them. All right, let's take a look at our hub and we're going to figure out how much or where we're going to start with machining these parallel in the mill before we put them in here and do all of our machining that we need to do to mount them and where we're going to actually stick this out and we're going to start machining this. The soft parallels are going to want to rest on this surface out here. This is machined, uh, original machining which would be in line with the bearing race here and here. This, this drum has got to turn 100% with the axis. And if you're doing all this machine work for this, this steel piece and this casting and all that, this right here should follow that dimension. So we're measuring down for our max depth or the max length out on our snout up to this face right here. And we're getting two inches, 750. All right, so we're just going to, and we check both, both hubs are the same within, you know, five ten thousandths. So that gives us that dimension to play with. So we're going to jot that down, and we're going to start roughing out our soft parallels. All right, we're going to set that at zero. Okay, we're gonna back it up a little bit. We just wanted to look at it, okay? Now what we're seeing here is we're seeing a little bit of galling going on or chip build up here, and we don't want that to become a gall surface. That seems kind of polished there, but it's not. Um, well, we're just gonna go ahead. Well, we have flood coolant, but we don't wanna put our guards and all that stuff up just to go ahead and mill out a couple flat pieces here so let's find our aluma tap here okay we found our aluma tap we'll fire this back up and all we're going to do is we're just going to put a little brush light coat here and all we need is just a little bit of that to get on to the cut we'll wrap it over here okay we'll take it from there Still not putting a whole bunch of soup out there, but it should keep that from galling up. And every once in a while, we can put just a little dab on here just to make sure. Okay, it doesn't really take that long to go across at that speed, uh, feed rate right there. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to just wrap it off here. 
and then we're going to wrap it back the other way. And we're going to show you a little bit of difference there. You can see the gloss here versus where it was at right, right here at the beginning. And you can see that I have a slight bit of trace of the cut on the back side as I do on the front side. Equally almost down here where it started out. Meaning my head is trammed in really, really close. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to, we're going to leave that one there. We're going to remove it and put the next block in here. And we're going to cut them all pretty close to the same height right there. Okay, the, uh, the other two that were kind of like middle cuts, um, they're a little bit thicker than the, uh, the end cuts that were just a plasma cut finish like we showed on that first one. So, almost done coming across this. We got one more and then we'll do uh, all the other four sides. It is kind of just a slam bam, make them, uh, make them square and, and parallel. Okay, we come over here to the lathe because we got this side here and we're just going to decide to just skim this across or do we really have to take anything off of it. Um, the main part, this jaw height right here is probably the one we're going to be most concerned with because that diameter from side to side here is going to be putting us out into this area right here. So I think just to skim off of there and we got a half an inch or so of material that we could play with there. And, of course, this is soft pad, so we don't really necessarily want to cut them down to our maximum anyway. So we're going to take a dress off clean here, and we'll create that step or clearance for that outside casting and catch that inner lip. And then from there out to here, we'll plan out how far we're going to stick this out here and machine this diameter uh, in the end of this rod here coming out so that we, we've got that, we're not exceeding that depth and we can rest properly onto our soft pads, which we'll be sitting in here just about like, about like that. Okay, the first hole we're drilling is uh, about 5 8 inch from the end, and this is gonna be our clearance hole for the 3 8 bolt that's gonna go down and grab that T-nut. We're gonna drill both of our holes the tap size and a through hole and then we'll set up and we'll come in with our 5 8 end mill just to give it uh, some clearance for the head on that and a tap for the 5 16 socket head that the socket head fits that other internal allen for the socket head that was there so it's a perfect uh, perfect match just drill and tap a hole and screw those in place with a couple washers we're going to be right there Okay, this is our tap size. Now this hole didn't have to go all the way through. It could come in from the other side. But we want that dimension measured over and we're setting off of a soft edge on the end of our part. So we want that same point of contact to be in there for center to center. So we're going ahead and leaving them in this position and we're going all the way through with this and then we can, we can tap it from the other side. And also too, that gives us a through hole so we're not uh, 
just blind tapping. There we go. Okay, we're set up with our four flute end mill. And we're coming down, we're touching here. We set our dial for zero there. We're gonna take this at an inch and a half deep here so that we're gonna be well below any machine surfaced on here. And we just go down, I don't know, about 50 thousandths, 100 thousandths, and then uh, we just get it a little bit moist. We wanna keep that cutting surface crisp and we don't want it to gall up. And this is just so that we can get that diameter and a nice flat surface for the Allen bolt to hold this jaw in place or parallel in place. I, I'm so used to saying soft jaws, I got that uh, in my head there. So soft parallels is what we're actually making. And you can make soft parallels on a, on a mill table too as well. You could actually bolt down a piece of aluminum and you can machine it off to a height that you actually need off of your table or uh, any of your fixtures, a tilt table or whatever. And we got about another 50 thousandths here and we'll call that it right there. Okay, now we're just taking and we're bringing our parts in line with the holes there and putting a countersink or a chamfer on all the holes here. We flip it over and keep the same side against the back just in case we're a couple thousands off. There we go. Some of these will just get cut off but they all get to start fresh. You can tell my spring's gone on this bridge port here. Buffy will have a brand new spring kit on hers. Oh. Yeah, that'll be enjoyable. Okay. We're going to do power tap with a little 5 16 um, national course tap here. And we'll set this in here and we want to go guide it side to side. So we're lined up. We, we left a little clearance because remember we're upside down. We're not really going to be touching the same spot because these ends are not faced off. So I did it by feel. All right. Now we're going to go all the way down and then back it all the way out. And we're just running on low here. And yes, the, the quill just drawn down by the tap itself. And I let it get down there to within about an eighth of an inch or so, and then slowly stop it. And then come back out. There we go. Okay, I'm going to leave the tap right in there. It's a through hole, meaning comes all the way out the bottom. This kind of tap pushes the, the bit down or the debris down into the bottom of the hole. So we'll blow that out with the air nozzle and this will be ready. All right, we're going to knock out the other two here um, or three and we'll get going. All right, let's see how well we, we've done. All right, this is in neutral. We, we got our parallel sitting here and we have our fastener sitting up here. We had already planned that we were going to put two flat washers on the small 5 16 Allen heads because this Allen sits down below that surface and if you go square across here it needed to have about two two washers. We had three stacked up here but three stuck out past this face and that would give us more than we needed so we screw in these here Feels like I got a bury. These are used fasteners, so I may have to clean that one. Let's go ahead and we'll put this one in here. That's a lot better. We'll wire wheel that other one. It's just got a little rust on it. All right. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. That fits in there. That feels good. It has just a tiny bit of play, but not much. All right. Now we have one T nut in here. We're gonna have to get. We're gonna have to get some more out of the rack there 
All right. There we go. Put that in there. That in there. My little extension. I always keep a little piece of tube for tightening my chuck jaws and things like that. And sometimes this is not... See, it's right there at the edge. I wouldn't be able to get in there. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. So, all right. We got one on there. Let's get the other three. I'm going to go clean off this uh, thread here real quick. And probably that one there too as well. That one looks good. Be right back. Okay, I think we've got these all tight now. All right. Now, we've got all four of our parallels are mounted up in here, rigid, solid, ready to go. Now we're going to take, we're going to come off of this surface right here and make sure that the end of this rod here is going to be within that distance that we want to uh, be able to clean up a true level surface here and a diameter here and then we'll be able to slide our drum on there and be ready to machine it let's go ahead and move this rod back here a bit this is uh, four and a half inches from here and we know that that depth was at two and three quarters uh safely we want the space to be about two and five eighths so we'll loosen up our number one and our number two jaws and we'll slide this in All right, let me get another straight edge here. This will work. And right now that's at uh, two and a half. Yeah, we'll bring it out just a scotch more. We can always face it off just a bit there, but we're at uh, like 2600. That's that's pretty good. That'll be enough to stick down in there and, and register that. And we're going to face a little bit off of here, and then that'll give us a little bit more. Okay, number one and two, we tighten those up. Let's... Bring in our Noga again. Within about 15 right there. Within about four right there. Within about one, but I mean it's running two, but there we go. All right, now we'll just kind of cinch it up. And then recheck it. That one felt a little loose. Might might have moved it. Half a thousandth. Okay. There we go. Pretty darn close. I like that. All right. Just double check again. We don't want this to move. Nothing else is going to move on this. We don't have to. We don't have to dial anything in after this. There we go. Okay, now everything's going to be machined to fit the backside of those, those drums, the bearing and the brake face. We just finished miking up our bores and we came up with 2 inches, 325 is the bore diameter. So we're going to turn this down till we get to that 2, 3, 25. And we're gonna we're gonna bring it back here a little bit so that we know we have plenty of it here, and it's gonna be smaller than this diameter. All right. After that, we'll come out here and we'll machine our parallel surfaces to support the back of the drum.
That's more than enough, I'd say. Okay, we're just getting down to that bump in diameter right there. All right, let's see what we got on this diameter here. We're going to have plenty here, it feels like. Yeah, yeah, we got uh, 2455. Just don't want to overdo it here, so let's see what we got. All right. Two three fifty three. Okay, that should be 325. I'm measuring 324, about a thou under. We'll have to see if we get a good fit on that. Let's check it out. I want to I want to break that leading edge there first. I don't feel any play in there. It does slip right on there with no problem. We don't want it to be actually press fit on there because we don't want to be rocking these things around, but let me check this other one here. You know, sometimes you don't want to do something over, but that's tough cookies. Uh, you know, I fit up that other one there and I got it, got into it. And I went ahead and decided to endo this piece and I'm right back out there again and I got uh, seven thousands to come sneak down to our number instead of getting so greedy and going right for it too quickly I'm sneaking it up uh, this time here and we're just gonna take a couple at a time till we come down to it we're seven this should uh, this would be uh, two so we should have about three thousands left on here and it's still a little bit warm so you're going to want to wait for it to cool down as well because I think that's what the thing was with my other one there is as soon as I fit that first one it was okay and I fit the second one and it was a little looser and I think it was just cooling down. I mean it's not extremely hot. I can hold my hand on there and all right and I'm getting three now. And we got three thousands left. I, I get right at... 325 and we're at 327 right now or 328 I'm going to take another 1000 
but about two tenths over right now I'm a lot happier with that that that's gonna be great I'm, I, I'm happy with that let's go ahead and break that edge again and then do a fit up again Figuring out what diameter we're gonna we're gonna relieve that outside of the parallel so that this step right here will hang over the edge of it. And it looks like the mean diameter that we really want to hold true is about like that, which is probably just just about 12, a little bit under 12. All right, let's see what that uh, looks like on our part over there okay I'm just kind of putting it right right inside that bore right there looks pretty close so if we turn this thing into that bore diameter now this one here is out just a little bit from it, but it'd be pretty close. All right, let's set up a high speed bit for that. We've got our high speed in here now, and we're about ready to touch off. And all we're going to do is we're going to face in until we get to our, our minor uh, hole. And uh, the depth, we measured that lip, and it sticks up about 3 eighths of an inch. Maybe about 350, but we're going to just call it 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, I don't need my auto feed on here. There we go. Okay, I'm going to come in and touch. There we go. All right, I'm going to set my zero here on my travel dial. And we're going to take 50 on the way in. Okay, we're into that opening now. I can I can tell by the sound and the visual on the ghost. There's a ghost as it turns around. Okay, that looks like I'm about three quarters of the way through. Let's see. Yeah, about three quarters of the way through there is about what I was seeing on that ghost right there. So really there's only about an eighth of an inch. And we're just measuring we're just looking at that diameter right there. That was 200. That one's an eighth. That one's 200. And that one's an eighth. We, we saw that two of them were farther away than, than the other two. All right. And we're gonna set zero on our, travel, or our dial here. And there's 125. Okay, we're gonna set that zero right there. Let's take our spring calipers here and let's see where we're at. I think that's pretty that's pretty good. I, I like that. Okay, we're coming in, and this is uh, 400 deep now. We'll verify that with our scale as soon as uh, we get in here. And there's our zero. All right. 
Yes, we're 400 deep right there. All right, and that should be inside that diameter there. So let's move this back and we'll pull out our bit here. I'm gonna blow a little air, earbuds. All right, let's grab a drum there and we'll see how she fits on there. Well, we might have to skim just a little bit off of that diameter in there. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go ahead and take and sand just a little bit off of that diameter right there. It's one the rock. It's moving, but uh, and we're gonna check our other one there. Let's see. Let's see uh, what we got there. Okay, here she comes. Just a little too snug. Yeah, nice. You can see it fit on there. All right. It's actually making a couple tents underneath right now, under what we we did that for. Let's let's check the other one, just to be safe. Okay. I'm just gonna give that a little massage. Cleaning up my file. There we go, up against the shoulder. All right, I like that feel. We're not clamped down yet, and you're going, well, how are you gonna be clamping down? Well, we have eight studs here, so that means four of them can line up with the T-nut slots, and I have enough room on the outside of this slot right here to put a hold down bolt. So we can go into plasma cutter and cut us out an eye or a, a chain link sort of shape that would be a hole for this and a hole for a holding rod here and we'll put a national fine nut here holding that ear out and then we'll be able to come in here and that's how we're going to hold this thing in place okay but for right now we can rotate this around and it's not it's not going anywhere 
we're flat. We haven't cut that face yet, but we will. But right now, I just want to see how close this bore actually rides with it just like this. So, bring this indicator in here. And we're going to reach all the way in there. All right, and we can come in until we make contact there. And let's rotate it around. Okay, I brought you in a little closer just so you could see that. Now, remember, this is the bore here that was a couple thousand egg shaped. <laughs> okay, we're not 100% holding it in, and you can see it moving around a little bit. But, and actually, we said uh, there's across the holes, there's in line, there's in, in line with a hole. So, it's hard to say. I just moved it a little bit there myself. All right, we're going to face that off, and then we're going to clamp it down. And after we have it clamped down, before we remo remove the material, we will definitely know how much we actually have off on that bore. We're just going to take a light skim, make sure that all four of these are exactly the right height here. Okay, and we're going to give it a little bit of feed here because we're going to we're going to let it feed in. And we're just going to touch the outside here. Here we go. All we need to do is go in about an inch. And as long as all four of them are being skimmed right. On the rotation, it looked it looked even as far as how much depth here was cutting. That one feels a little more than that one there. We could probably get the depth mic and then mic that up, but uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, now we got an even surface right there. All right, let's get our hub back up here, and then we're going to plan out our ears to hold this up against the chuck. There we go. All right, and we just kind of pick... A straight in line here that one okay we found some homemade t-nut slots that we made for one of our other rigs there a long time ago one of our tables and uh, we're just screwing the stud into where it holds it straight out because then we can get the mean center to center across these There we go. Okay, where's our scale? Okay, it looks like two and an eighth. Two and an eighth. That one looks closer to being a little bit on two, but the stud looks like it's bent in a little bit. All right, and this one here. Two and a quarter. This one could move. Th these could move a little bit. All right, we're going to call it two and an eighth on our whole center. Half inch there, three eighths here. All right, let's go uh, into plasma table, and we'll go ahead and we'll burn ourselves some, some ears on there, and then we'll come back and we'll bolt this thing in place.
Okay, <clears throat> we finished cutting out the rest of our ears after we tested the one, and we brought in the other three to put them in here. These are just three quarter National Fine nuts here. A little bit of paint on the studs here from them painting them. Be faster with an impact, but we want to make sure that uh, everything goes together by finger or lightly wrenched. All right, let's get this next one on here. I'm going to go around and that two and an eighth inch di distance in there is working out perfect. And I gave about 50 thousandths clearance on the plasma cut holes. Because all we're doing is an in, we're not locating it, we're just holding it in. All right, and tighten my last stud up here. Okay, there we go. See now these are the bigger nuts, they're, they're going to hold that plate flatter. This is only 3 sixteenths of an inch thick here, so it's not like I can go wrenching real hard down on it. I probably could get by with an inch shorter stud, but I'm going to go ahead and throw, I'm gonna throw a flat washer on there. Okay, we'll pull that one off in a second here. Okay, that's all it needs to be. We don't have to get over tight on it. Let's uh, want to see it spinning, right? All right, that looks good. All right, ready to put an indicator in here and see how that's running out. All right. Let's take a look. I'm going in here where the best material is. And three, maybe three and a half thousandths. Okay, I was trying to find a pointer here. All right, you see that's where that knockout area is. So in line with here and in line with this one here, you have your extremes, high and low. Right up close, this is about the best way to get it. Now, halfway in between those points, you got near zero and zero. All right, I'm happy with how we're locating, and when we get ready to to uh, turn the finished product, we're going to be able to turn a diameter here that's going to match the brake area and the rear support bearing race. You know, it's kind of, di yeah, I come out here in a little bit di different area, but I still get pretty close to the same thing. Close to zero in between, 
both ways and the extremes are right out where the knockout is there. Thank you.